Hey, call me Louis. This is my spot. Louis spot. Who of you knows melanin? This is Dr. Kihuran Kuba. So today we take a look at what really makes a black man a black man and that's the presence of melanin in their body. We first begin by taking a look at short introduction of what melanin really is and the six supernatural powers that the presence of melanin in the body gives you. M E W L A N I N. Melanin anybody? Huh? Okay, you haven't Yes, she knows because <laughs> because she works for the virus institute and you know because you are a teacher but what about you melanin is a carbon that does not deteriorate deteriorate over time melanin is your black skin pigmentation or some in plants it is equivalent chlorophyll but it is the most powerful thing that you can have in terms of people we get your importance on the amount of melanin you have. So we say the darker the better. The darker the better. Melanin is produced by an enzyme, you know an enzyme? Called melatonin. If you have internet and you look for melatonin, you will find there are over 100,000 products made out of melatonin. Basically made out of black skin. So, melatonin, melanin, and tyrosinase 7. If you have no tyrosinase 7, you can't have black skin. You can't. And in, my, in biology, if you have no black skin, they say you are depigmented, demelanized, or you are an albino. Melanin gives you protection. This melanin is responsible for a lot of things. Number one, it protects you against the ultraviolet rays of the sun and the energy from the earth. So, when the sun hits your body, certain rays are allowed in, certain rays are filtered out. It stops you getting skin cancer. Then it protects you against the energy from the earth, which means if you are standing, it anchors you. Like in electricity, you have earthing. Yeah? When, when something is earth, it's not hit by lightning. You know that. So, if you are standing here with a white person and lightning struck, it would pick a white person, throw him there, you would remain standing tall, blessed of the sun, because of your melanin. So, number one, protects you against the ultraviolet rays of the sun. Number two, protects you against the energy from the earth. It earth anchors you. Healing. Number three, melanin is responsible for healing. When you look, when you cut yourself, if you cut yourself, you see blood, you see something red, they may be white. And when it starts healing, a dark skin comes and covers it, or a dark patch comes and covers it. That dark patch is melanin. Melanin sends reinforcement around the area that is affected and brings about healing. So melanin is also responsible for healing. Sleep cycle. Melanin is responsible for a sleeping cycle, how you sleep. If you don't have melanin, you don't sleep properly. You have what they call insomnia. Energizer. Melanin controls fatigue. So you are not tired most of the time. So other people who don't have melanin, they have fatigue. If they travel in a plane, they get what they call jet lag. Cosmic connection. Then melanin is also responsible for something else, what we call a corresponding cosmic connection. It, it, it links you to the universe. You begin feeling something. You, know, when you feel energy pulses. You know there is a lot of energy that is here that you don't see. Energy you don't see, but you can harness it. For example, if somebody calls you on phone, you don't see the sound traveling in the air. You know, but it comes to your phone. So the, there is a, a, a ultra violent, uh, ultra high frequency signal that comes to your telephone. Are you with me? So for example, one way you can test a corresponding cosmic connection is when a black person hears a music pulse, a sound pulse, a sound, an energy sound. 
So if I say na 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 if it was a white person, they wouldn't feel the rhythm. And if they started dancing, they would be jumping up like this, and then they would do this, and, you know, they would not move in tandem with the rhythm because they don't have melanin. They do not have that corresponding cosmic connection. The corresponding cosmic connection also means that you could be seated here, and something happens to you, and your mother at home will see a leaf fall from a tree, and you say there's something wrong with my son. Or you could be going somewhere and you see a rat cross the road, you say, ah, uh -uh, this is not a good thing. You know, so, so that nature works with you, not against you, to warn you, to be, you are at harmony with nature. So that's another thing that melanin does. Protects you against the ultraviolet rays of the sun, the energy from the earth. Melanin controls hearing, melanin controls fatigue, melanin gives you a corresponding cosmic connection. Dominant genes. But melanin also does something else. Melanin gives you dominant genes. Dominant genes. Now, you know the science of genetics, yeah? You know genetics genes? That science started around 1822 with a gentleman called Gregor Mendel. Gregor Mendel. Mendel, Gregor Mendel. Me Gregor Mendel was an Austrian from Austria and he was a Catholic priest from the Augustine monks. He was an Augustine monk. Augustine uh, was lived around the second, third, fourth century, no, fourth century AD, and he was the black person who lived in North Africa in a place called Hipporigius, who wrote the laws of the Catholic Church. Because most of you think that, you know, white people brought religion and, and they, you know, and they taught you how to read and write. That's all not true. That's, that's what we call his story, the white man's side of the story. It's not our story. It's not true. So I am just telling you that a great Augustine of Hippo was this bishop who wrote the laws of the Catholic Church. Now, the followers of Augustine are called Augustinian monks. And one of the Augustinian monks was Gregory Mendel, who lived in Austria around 1822. And in Austria, he was looking at genes because at that time, white people were wondering where Humanity started. Who are the first people to populate the world? And they thought that white people were the first people to populate the world. And at the time, Christianity was very heavy in Europe. It's not the same now. You know, if you go in a church in, in, in England, you will probably find about two or three people, the priest and his assistant and maybe one other person, unless it's Christmas. You know, so they were first looking in Europe. Then they couldn't find, the oldest they could go was 40,000 years. Then they went to Asia, the oldest they could go was 900,000 years. And then they came to Africa. And the oldest they could go in Africa was about 1.5 million years. So, Mendo wanted to find out using genes, inherited characteristics. Because you know, when, you, when a man meets a woman, in Africa we say you have a spiritual congress. European people say you have sex. For in Africa, we don't have sex. We don't even have a word for it. We, we call it a spiritual congress. But when a man meets a woman, they exchange first genes. And the first genes they exchange, the first genes they exchange is called nuclear DNA. And you share, you know, almost uh, equal sequence the, that sit on your chromosome. So you have a certain equal percentage from the male and the female. But there is a certain gene that the mother passes on to the child without going through the filtration process. That is called mita, mita, chondria, DNA. Mitochondria DNA. Sometimes it's written like this. Mitochondria DNA. 
That one, the mother passes to the child without going through filtration process. The father doesn't contribute to that DNA. So if we want to find out who is your father, we will just look at your mitochondria DNA. But the inherited characteristics pass through uh, from the nuclear DNA. So Mendo was looking at these characteristics and he was looking at plants to see what does a father plant give to a child plant? What does a mother plant uh, uh, give to a child plant? And then he went to animals. And Mendo concluded that if you began with white people, you would ne never find, you'd never have got black people. Because white people have what they call recessive genes. Do you study that? You study recessive genes? You also study dominant genes. You study that? Now, if you study recessive genes and dominant genes, you know that a recessive can never produce a what? A recessive can never produce a dominant. But a dominant can do what? Very good, very good. It, some of your fees, you know, went for a good cause. Huh? If you know recessive genes, you can never stay away from that. Recessive genes, no two white cats can produce a black cat. No two white goats can produce a black goat. No two white cows can produce a black cow. No two white chickens can produce a white chicken. And no two albinos, no two white people can produce a black person. Why? Because black is dominant and white is recessive. Which means what? It means you produced white people. If you had begun with white people, if Adam and Eve had been a white person, you would not be here. What do you guys think? Share thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. Let's have a proper discussion about this without having me impose my opinions and ideas on this matter. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it so that the YouTube algorithm can know that this video was so much interesting and share it far wide to more avid viewers just like you. Subscribe and click the notification bell if this is your first time watching these videos and so that you can be notified as soon as we make a new upload on videos just like this. My name is Louis. Until next time, peace out.